guys, welcome back to another episode of Serious C Podcast. I'm Mary. I'm Brittany. And if you guys are not familiar with us, we recap the hottest digital series out here. So if you guys want to hear more about what we do, please make sure you guys subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below and the notification bell so you guys always know when we upload a new video. Stay in the know. So today we are talking about bigger. You know, last week we did episode one. Today we're doing episode two. And, you know, we like to bring some special guests with us. So today we have the one and only Rashida Crockett, who plays our girl, Tracy. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Thank you guys for having me. I love you guys. I love how much you guys support the show. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Love you too, girl. Jumping into Bigger, um, you guys were able to actually work during the quarantine. So talk to us a little bit about how that went down. Well, the production date had gotten pushed back a few months because of the panty liner. And (laughs) we started shooting in September. Girl, I just feel grateful and like victorious that we were able to get through. No one got sick. There weren't any issues. And, um, you know, it was a little bit of added like pressure and responsibility because nobody wants to be that girl who fork around, pop pot, and now you done shut down production for two weeks. (laughs) Nobody wants to be that girl, right? So... And, you know, we love we love Atlanta. It, we love Georgia. I love a lot of things about it. But they were not forking with masks out there. And they were not forking with social distance. And it was still real popping. It was lit down in Atlanta <laughs> during the panty liner. <laughs> Do with that as you will. So we got tested every other day. So that would be three times a week because we shot Monday through Friday. And um, I felt safe. We had a really great um, health and safety division on set put your mask on put your eye covers on you know they were they were on it Mm -hmm. and it was for everybody's safety so it's cool um but yeah I feel like really victorious that we were able to complete something like that at a time like that at a time like this Mm -hmm. exactly (laughs) yeah it was it was interesting to see like how the characters are literally going through what we're going through right now so you can even relate to them in this whole experience which was amazing how you guys Girl, it was the panic attacks for me i was like yo <laughs> yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that feels about right the blue squiggly lines that feels yep. about right feeling that right now mm-hmm. <laughs> deep breaths okay okay <laughs> jumping out the car in traffic <laughs> that was terrifying to watch oh my gosh we're going to get into that. But let's talk about Tracy a little bit. How do you feel your um, character has evolved from season one to now? I mean, I know it's still early, but what can you give us? I, yeah, without giving out too many spoilers. So we meet Aaron. Aaron is um, Tracy's kryptonite. He is the man who broke her heart and had her all on basketball exes. Mm. Season one, fighting with Keisha at the reunion, season one. And um, he comes back. And, uh, you know, the question comes to mind, like, why do these dudes, when you're on, when these women are on a reality show, and we're talking about Tracy, Mm -hmm. Tracy's on a reality show now, and then, you know, her ex comes back, like, oh, I don't want to be on the show, I just want to be with you. But you could have been with me this whole time. And, you know, you kind of ask the question, like, does he want to be with Tracy because he's, he loves her or is he coming back for just like money and clout? Um, so that is kind of, I think where it is around episode two mm-hmm. um, on Tracy's journey. Cause she still don't trust him and she doesn't necessarily have a reason to because he's back on the show with her and the producers brought him back. You yeah. know, if you love Tracy so much, why, you know, why didn't you go to, directly to Tracy? Why are you circumventing Tracy and going through the producers to get her back? So, but you don't want to be on the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> but I, I see Tracy be like a lot more vulnerable this season oh. because of the romantic um, yeah. entanglement. Yeah, we were curious about that because, you know, last season we didn't see her, you know, have a romantic interest like that. She was kind of just like on Dry as a bone. <laughs> <laughs> Rise above. So that could be interesting to watch. Um, what else are you like most excited for the audience to like learn about Tracy this season? I really want people to see how like 
human and soft and fragile she is. I think because Tracy's real loud, people think she don't hurt and she don't bleed and she just says whatever she wants to say because she's super strong and she don't care what nobody think. No, like she gets her feelings hurt a lot. Like she gets her heart broken a lot. Like she feels every time she plays herself on this show, she feels it like she feels dumb. Mm. And you know, she has her friends to come and pick her up. But this is a real life journey that I feel like, you know, if enough of us are being honest, we we go through, you know, listening to other people being deceived by, mm-hmm. you know, people you trusted and sometimes work relationships and, you know, people monopolizing and commodifying off of your pain and just the voyeuristic aspect of social media and reality television. Like people just want to see you struggle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it happens with Tracy and she just wants to be happy and she just wants to be in love and she wants to feel like she can trust trust people but you know when it all comes down to it she can trust her friends and she can trust herself yes um and we see you know she's back on basketball exes but she's still grinding like where her meals like i felt like she was really taking off with her social media are we going to see that again like girl i mean so after they went and got her arrested at the end of season one (laughs) I feel like Tracy (laughs) is kind of on a tight leash for a little bit. You know, you know, it's all fun and games until you see the bookends. So, (laughs) (laughs) but you know what? Watch the full season, and you know you'll you'll see that she isn't just a one trick pony. She isn't just a reality star. Tracy wants to do a bunch of different things, and she does. Yeah, one of those one one of those things includes being in a healthy relationship. So she's trying to make it all work. Okay. okay, I'm here for it. We right? just want to see Tracy win. We That's love it. We Come on, we just want to see my girl win. I be I, I say that all the time about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see you win, sis. That's it. All right, guys. So I'm about to get into the recap right now. Season two, episode two. You feel better. I feel better. Don't miss the all-new HBO Max original comedy series, That Damn Michael Shea, starring none other than Michael Shea, featuring celebrity guests Amari Hardwick, Cicely Strong, Colin Jost, Billy Porter, and Method Man, among others. That Damn Michael Shea explores Michael's perspective on everyday situations, including racial profiling, unemployment, falling in love, and more. Stream That Damn Michael Shea now on HBO Max. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, so the episode starts out. We have Lane. She's at work. She's stressing out because, you know, she has this big Billie Eilish gig. And the stylist wants to see some looks. And she has nothing. Liberty's no help. Like, they're looking for 70s. She's bringing out 80s. Like, girl, what What did I hire you for? Right. What's going on? looking for? Liberty was just doing her best. Poor Lane. <laughs> shout out to Angela Coe. She is hilarious and she just is. truly like, them to work with. I hope we yes. see more of her on our TV screens. Mm-hmm. She's and always I, dope. I love the mask that she always has. She has like a different one that's like so out of this world. It's like, girl, <laughs> we know we're in a panini right now, but you're doing a lot <laughs> with these masks. With your mask. Her, her mask game was, was heavy, uh, heavy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Proper. <laughs> mask game, proper. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, Lane is, she's like, all right, fine. I'll go help you out in the back. So they leave all the customers out front. She sure did. With no one watching. No security. Yeah, no security. No, no, I've never that before. No, I've never worked customer service before. I've done that. I, of course. <laughs> but I feel like there's always somebody on the floor. Absolutely. And sh- we could do this meeting at the end of the day, like when the customers <laughs> are gone. Like, why are you trying to do this now? The whole store is full. Like, you have a whole line of customers. This is not the time for a meeting. I love love the specifics of these (laughs) reasons. Okay. First of all. (laughs) Because me as a customer, I'm leaving. Like, you don't want to help me? You don't want my money? I'm gone. Yeah. I'm gone. Me and the earrings. No, don't steal. That's not right. I'm stealing, but definitely, like, I'm out of here. I'm not doing this. Um, so then we move on to Vince. 
who's with his um his lady Shoshana. I said it, episode one. I said they got something going on. It's some sugar mama situation. He called it. She was like, she he met her at a bar mitzvah that he was part of. Yep. And uh she's Girl, you got vision. Yes, that's what Raven. I knew it. You got vision. Yeah. That was actually so when I found out because we shoot um we shoot in two episode blocks. So we shot episode one and episode two simultaneously. And uh, we had the opportunity to work with Tori Spelling early, who, by the way, is hilarious and just like Hollywood royalty. So when we found out that, okay, Vince has a love interest this season, good. Oh, and it's Tori Spelling? Mm. Great. Okay. So (laughs) the first thing we shot with her was the scene where um, we were at the hospital picking Lane up from her panic attack. Mm -hmm. And um, the car that she was driving kind of just shut off at one point. And it just started rolling, like, in neutral. I was like, oh, she totally done broke the whip. It was one of them, big, like, one of them nice, expensive cars. She was like, I didn't break it. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Like, she's just funny in real life. I didn't break it. I promise. I promise I didn't break it. <laughs> Yeah, we were so excited to see her because we're like 90210 fans. So we was like, yeah, that's how he's spelling. <laughs> so yeah, so Shauna is his whole sugar mama, but she low-key trying to be his girlfriend. And he's like, whoa, pump your brakes. <laughs> right, right. No. Well, I just want to properly meet her. Not just like in a hospital parking lot. <laughs> nah, I want you all to myself. Ooh. I mean, Look, not that any of us should be out here trying to be somebody's sugar mama, but if we're sleeping together and I'm taking care of everything, you better have a nice name for me. I mean, at least you better call me something nice. You better talk real nice. Like, I talk to me nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know, but he's kind of like want to keep everything on the low, like on the wraps. He don't even really want her to meet the crew officially. And it's I like, know. what? what are you hiding? What's going on? I assumed that he was her little boy toy. I, I'm like, oh, she's married probably. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what's happening here, but it seems like she was single and she just wants, you know, her little boyfriend. Yeah. It was a lot cleaner of a situation than I initially thought it would be. Right. Too. I assumed that initially too. Like, oh, okay. So he's either like, he's he's doing, he's, he's living in sin. Whatever this is, it's sinful. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't that bad. It, it yeah. wasn't like a, an affair, and he's breaking up a happy home, which I'm happy to see. The fans exactly. happy to see. Even though we love the drama, we're glad it's not that route. <laughs> I'm glad the morality stayed stayed there. Yeah, but she really just takes care of this grown ass man. Like she's like, you you can stay here. My son left his little game that you can play. I'm like, oh no, honey. <laughs> but he was just like, thanks. Like, like she's like his mom. Yes. yes. I mean, even so further on in the season, there's a wedding scene and we're at the dinner table at the wedding and Shosh is sitting with us and we're like, all right, girl, what's the tea? Like, how are white women getting these black men and keeping them? And she's like, I just support him and his dreams and I pay all his bills. You ain't have it. I'm not paying all no man's bills. I'm not paying half no man's bills. And frankly, if we got bills together, I don't want to pay those either. So, like, how, how do you do that? How do you do that? I don't want to do with, deal with bills. And I totally understand. Right. I got my own bills. And bills is different. Like some most men wouldn't take that. Like, no, I'ma do I'm a I'ma be the man of the house. I'ma take care of myself. Vince is living it up. He's like, I'll take I it think off. a lot of guys, if presented with that kind of I can't say I think a lot. I wonder how many guys, if presented with that situation, because not all these dudes have that option. That's true. That is if true. presented with a situation like Vince's, would they do it? Dion wasn't with the shits. No, no, but no. <laughs> at all. Listen, if the shoe was on the other foot, I don't know if I'll be saying no to a man just paying my bills. <laughs> if he was as nice as Shoshana was. Yeah. Right. You know, she's so nice. She was... It, she wasn't beating him. No. no. She was just white. Like, she wasn't. No, no violence so, at all. Yeah, she wasn't talking down to him. She wasn't abusive. She was 
she was just a white woman who called him boy, but she didn't mean nothing by it. <laughs> nice lady. Nice, nice lady. lady. <laughs> So they go to brunch and the brunch is giving nightclub vibes. I thought it was a nightclub. I had to watch it over. I'm like, they're not at a club. I said, what time is it? Have you been to Atlanta? I haven't. I have, but not, I haven't been to a brunch in Atlanta. But we have a brunches here in New York that that get lit like that too. Middle not of the like day. that. I was just like, they're in the club. Middle of the day in the center of a panty line. <laughs> That's too much for me. That's a little <laughs> <laughs> not right now. <laughs> I didn't know the time until Veronica was like, do these kids know it's 11 a.m.? I was like, is it? When she came with the sparklers. I was like, what are we doing? Where are you going? <laughs> it's only, I mean, it's so funny because in the middle of the pandemic, Atlanta brunches was still that popping. I was getting invitations to brunches and I'm like, you guys, I, I'm shooting a show. I, 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 just, I can't afford to go be at an active brunch situation and I want to go to work and get tested for COVID three times a week. It's just irresponsible. <laughs> it's not safe. Atlanta never shut down. It never, never did. I don't think they were in the panini like us. But I love lit brunches though. Like oh, somebody, yeah. let's, let's swag surf over the chicken and waffles. I want to do it. I'm here for it. But bring me my chicken and waffles because Lane was very much like, where is my food? Are they already drunk? Was this us? You know it was. We are dealing with wrong folks problems. Like, didn't we just have to leave a hospital last night? Oh, we need to have some fun. Yeah, that's how I feel. I am being Tracy. Yes, that's how. You stay out the hospital when you're laughing and you're having fun. Laughter is the best medicine. So go, let's go out, let's eat. Meanwhile, I just can't get over how lit stuff was. I know. And like in other cities, stuff is closed. You can only eat outside. (laughs) (laughs) And then you go to Atlanta brunches and we have sparklers. What? (laughs) Yeah, so uh, so they switch locations. And um, this guy walks in, and he's he's fine. He was a fine brother. He was yes, cute. He was. I said, Hello, sir. <laughs> That's because we haven't seen anybody. So, <laughs> who's this? Oh, nothing, Jesus. Okay. Yes. <laughs> who is? Who is? <laughs> And Veronica's usually the one that's kind of like on it. Like she sees something, I want it, I got it. And everybody's looking like this is your time. And she's not interested at all. Uh, yeah. No thanks, Brian. He's super cute. Too on the nose cute. What does that even mean when you're talking about a fine man? Right. Some girls don't like the pretty boys. So I guess that's kind of what Veronica was saying. Maybe he was just too too cute like nothing special about him but he was fine to me he was he was a good looking dude they were like are you okay sis like do you have covid like what's going on how why don't you want this man i don't know and then he ends up telling the waiter to give her his number Mm -hmm. um which was like a cute little move have that ever happened to y'all when y'all out and a guy sends over a drink or his number no i thought that was only happening in movies and tv i'm like people do that Uh, i mean i've had guys by me drink right i'm not saying your number no girl i can't even remember the last (laughs) time someone didn't slide in my dms you know what i mean like i don't really even know how else people are like meeting people it's saying how where do people meet these days People. It's all lit brunches in Atlanta, guys. We're missing out. We're missing out. You know what? I wonder if like shows like Bigger and you know shows like Insecure and shows that are kind of like in tune with the zeitgeist are actually setting the trend mm. for how these things are going to happen. Maybe guys are going to you know start coming correct and buying women bottles of champagne with their number attached. I would love that. I love that. Same, I would feel like a Foxy Brown song. Yeah. He's got a bottle of Foxy Brown Royale with a note attached. Right? He said, You look like the type that know what you like. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. A Foxy song for those who love are, it. Or listen. Oh. So. <laughs> those are Foxy lyrics, guys. Yes. So the crew is just kind of like talking and everything, and Vince brings up Shoshana. And nobody wants to meet her in person. They're not the interested. girls don't want to meet her. They're yeah. like, we're good. We're all good. <laughs> like yesterday, actually. We're, we're okay. We met her. What do you mean? You want us to meet her? We met her. No new friends. How do you ladies feel about that? Is it unfair to not want to get to know 
your friend's white girlfriend who is um, financing his life? Not at all. I, uh, no, I feel like they should be more open. Like he's happy. I mean, they may be not accepting of his lifestyle choices, but I don't know. <laughs> it's like, what do you, what, where is this going? Like, what do you, what do you want to see come up out of this? Mm. That's Are y'all getting married? Like, what's the point? Is she going to raise your babies? Like what, what, what's, what's, what's happening here? Like, is this just a, a, a fling? Like, do we really need to meet a... We don't want to get involved. With my guy friends, if you bring me around your little fling, I'll be nice to her and I'll be kind and I'll be respectful out of respect for you. But it's different than, like, if my homegirls bring around, like, some dude they just talking to, right? Yeah. Like, if, now, if you bring me around your girlfriend for six years, okay, she's family. Come on, bring her, bring her around. Mm -hmm. But, like... You know, my homegirls are like, oh, yeah, I just met this dude. We all going out. Oh, then we all going out. Come on. Let's let's go have a good time. Right. And one of my guy friends do that. I'm like. Well, I think it's just like about? having more females around that. It's just like, you know, things can go a little like, girl, don't come around me no more. I just don't know a guy where it's just like, oh, you cool. Right. You don't know what the vibe is going to be like mm -hmm. when you. you know what I mean, don't get me wrong. I love I love having women around and new women and like you know all of those things. But I'm talking about if it's like if my loyalty is with the guy, you know, when females come around, it, it gets weird because it's like you want to be loyal to this to this lady, but because you know girl power. But right. really, my loyalty is to this friend that I've had for the past 15 years, this male friend that I've had for the past 15 yeah. years. And she might not understand that you guys have a friendship already. She might look at you like, hold up, why are you so close to my man? And it's like, girl, well, let's just start with that dumb shit. And I don't know what to you just tell. never know. So, yeah, because don't, I'm sorry he didn't brief you. <laughs> <laughs> don't come over here playing yourself with that not brief you. Um, so, yeah, the only person that's I, down is Dion, is because, is, and it's only because, you know, Vince said, you know, Shoshana's paying. And he's like, I'll be there for the food and drinks. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Dion ain't got nothing else to do. So, we taking Dion. Right. <laughs> And Vince pretty much tells Lane, like, you know, he really wants her to come because, you know, he's related to her. And he's like, you should come mm -hmm. out. You know, you need to relax before you end up in the hospital again. And she's like, I'm better. Like, what are you talking about? I'm completely fine. Yes. And nobody believes that. They're like, girl, what? <laughs> Do you know what the definition of fine means? Yeah, like, she's she's struggling. My, I think it's very relatable that in this season, a lot of people are struggling with anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's unprecedented for our generation to have been quarantined for this amount of time. It kind of happened out of nowhere. And even if you aren't thinking about it, the body keeps count. So I really do think and appreci I appreciate the writers for including this anxiety storyline um, through the pandemic with, you know, using Lane as a vehicle for that. I thought it was really brilliant and I thought it was really like responsibly depicted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it fits her very, very well. It's like the blue, oh, that's so lame. <laughs> like her living in her nervous puddle. That is so lame. Yeah. Oh gosh. I loved it. I loved it. That's one of my favorite like through lines this season mm -hmm. is getting to, you know, watch them depict that on the show. Kudos, kudos to our writers. They're brilliant. Yes. Love it. Shout out to the writers. So, but at this point, they all blame Dion. They're like, you're the reason why our girl is chilling. <laughs> and he's like, confused. What are you doing? He's like, I'm chilling. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. What are you talking about? And I love how everyone immediately went to the private group chat. Like, everybody's talking about each other in a little private chat. Like, right? the girls are not having this discussion like, no more. <laughs> Are you stressing my homegirl? Ain't nobody stressing nobody. You stressing my cousin? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. To and Dion. <laughs> yes, but obviously Dion is a big stressor in her life because mm -hmm. she has so much built up that we'll get into later. And Veronica said that her celibacy is actually was adding to her stress. Mm -hmm. Celibacy is more than likely adding to the stress. Everybody isn't ruled by their libido like you. Well, yeah, you say that because your libido has been in hibernation. <laughs> That's not true. I have plenty of options. It's just that at a certain age, you know, it gets old if it ain't with the right person anyway, you know? Exactly. No. 
I don't know. Forget what she's talking about, Lane. I'll do it with you. I don't have time for shenanigans anyway. And Tracy's like, how about we do it together? So they form a celibacy pack, which isn't hard for Tracy because she don't have many suspects. So. <laughs> I love <her. laughs> It's easy. <Wow. laughs> Guys, okay, how does it come off to the audience? Does it come off that Tracy is highly focused and she's just about her business or she's highly selective or she just, what do you, what do you guys think? For me personally, I thought that she was just all about her business. Like that's literally what I have in my notes here. I'm like, yeah. I want to see her, you know, I want to see her in a relationship because I feel like at this point she she kind of found herself, you know, she has her business going on. She's on a show now, she's making money. So I would want to see her, you know, explore love and relationships. Mm-hmm. For sure. And I'm actually surprised that she doesn't have like some guys calling her or like talks about it because she's like she likes the attention. So I'm surprised she don't have like a couple of guys like, oh, you know, that's just so and so taking me out, mm. like anything like that. But she is about her business. Yeah, I think I think that it is that she's mostly about her business. Even when I read the scripts, I'm like, oh, she the only man she has ever talked about is Aaron. That's it. Yeah. Right. So when he came back, I was like, oh, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> Girl, he just all big. I That's know. Cool. Oh, okay, Aaron. That's Aaron came back so big. <laughs> um, so we see Tracy. You know, she's on set. She's like filming the scene where she sort of confronts another cast member about you know talking about her on social media. Carly. And then Car- okay. it's Carly playing herself, or is she playing someone else. Carly is playing another character, but another reality star yeah, on the yeah. show Basketball Exes, the reality show that doesn't exist. <laughs> the favorite reality show that doesn't exist. Basketball Exes is hilarious. I, God, I love this show. Like, it's I just so perfect. It's show within the show for me. Yes. But yeah. <laughs> love it. Okay. So Renee tries to be shady, and, you know, we've seen already that Tracy, she likes to just take the high road and be like the bigger person, but production definitely wants her to just be like this ratchet person. So Carly, Carly, Renee ends up going in about something that's really personal to, um, to Tracy. The Tracy that decorated Aaron's whole house thinking it was going to be yours one day just to have another bitch move in to enjoy it. And Tracy ends up, you know, throwing water in her face and production's like, cut, that was perfect. That's exactly what we want. Do that, that next time. Every single time, do that. These reality shows love a drink in the face. They love, love it. it funny okay first of all carly is a rider so the first take of that there was lemon in the water we was like okay so can we get a glass of water with no lemon so we don't burn out miss carly's eyeballs thank you all yo carly is great first of all and i'm gonna just say this reality tv is kind of like a guilty pleasure for me Mm -hmm. every season on love and hip-hop atlanta i root for carly because (laughs) say what you will even if she's messy on the show, Carly Red be telling the truth. Sure. That's how I felt from the beginning. So mm-hmm. I remember when I met her, I was like, yo, I, I'm happy to be working with you. I am a fan. And um, she she was awesome, 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 awesome to work with. But in regards to like Tracy even being back on the show, Tracy is always taking the high road unless you talk about Aaron. Have y'all noticed that? That's true. That That's is- true. The moment it comes down to Aaron, Tracy be ready to fight. Yes. Right? And production knows this. She did fight. She did fight last season. <laughs> be ready to fight and did it last season. Had the whole squad fight and they went to jail. Thanks for <laughs> Aaron. Yes, yeah, she did. Aaron. Behind Aaron. But, you know, we ain't bring that up in an argument or two, you know, this season. <laughs> But Renee went below the belt because she's talked about how, you know, Aaron, uh, Tracy fixed up the house for Aaron to just move in a new girl. Like, ow, that hurt. Don't I'm talk hurt. about business, first of all. <laughs> Don't talk about business, first of all. Yes. 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 Thank you. <laughs> that is hella shady. Don't be on a reality show, but don't tell my reality. What are you saying? <laughs> Oh, I mean, the thought of that, of you, like, decorating a whole house, I had to have taken Tracy months. 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 She built a home. Oh, she built a home. <laughs> home for this man. I am fooling with y'all. Okay, yes. <laughs> she built a home. 
And the producer just like, oh, great job. That right? was amazing. And Tracy is pissed off. Like, I'm out. Right, Sally so. Um, yeah. She ends up having a meeting with the producer and, you know, she just gives him all her demands. Like, don't try that no more. Like, that's not what I came back for. Like, I'm not with the whole blindsiding thing. Like, that does not work for me. And he's right. like, yeah, yeah, sure. Tell me how this will work for you. Like, right, because she How would it personally work for you? Right. <laughs> Right, because you're just a shit. We just, we just gonna do what you tell us. Right, to do. yeah, yeah, yeah. We work for you. So let us know, like how right. it works. <laughs> and Tracy had ideas. She sure did. <laughs> mm-hmm. She had ideas, and one idea was rock climbing and um, displaying her frozen food deal. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, keeping it lighthearted, keeping it fun, family fun. <laughs> And I already knew something was about to go down because it was just too easy. Right. Like, as soon as she gets down from rock climbing, they brought out their secret weapon, which was Aaron. Just randomly, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? What are you doing here? (laughs) Where have you been? That's so weird for you to just show up at me rock climbing. That's that's odd. (laughs) On a scale (laughs) from doing spoilers. Okay, keep going. I want to hear what you guys have to say. <laughs> I'm going to say it makes her sick to her stomach and she throws up yeah. and there we go. <laughs> On a scale from one to ten, how nasty was that throw up for y'all? Like when y'all saw it? it was gross. It was gross. It was a smooth ten. Same. It was a smooth ten. Um, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't want to see that. Yeah. Um, but it was real. It is my personal opinion that you never have to show throw up on TV. Don't have to do that- it. Because if we hear it, we know. We see the pre, we know. I, I don't think you ever have to show it. <laughs> you don't need to see it. The the sound is enough. <laughs> That's it. Oh my god! When I saw it in ADR, my response was so um loud and and and, and filled with terror (laughs) i can hear felicia in my headphones like can we record that like (laughs) we're like oh my god i didn't know that they but they were gonna show the throw up yeah i did i knew they was gonna show the throw up because it made no sense for them to like i I put all the stuff in my mouth why wouldn't they show it right yeah 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 did you have to do a lot of takes Eh, maybe two or three okay it was apple juice Okay. Um, I, I don't want to ruin the movie magic. But <laughs> we get look, drop the exclusives. We love it here. <laughs> so we see next scene, um, we have Veronica. She's building her dream home. You know, last season we saw she that was her idea. So now we're really coming to fruition. Like mm-hmm. it's really happening. And I, I love that for her. I loved it. So and she's feeling judged by the construction worker, which he just asking his formal questions. That's These are it. regular questions. I'm just doing my job. That's all. So what style of his and her sinks are you thinking? There is no him. Okay? What, a woman can't just make her own money, buy her own home, and sleep in a different room every week if she wants? Yeah, that's perfectly. There is no him. It is just me. Okay? You work in real estate. You know that's what they're called. They're called a his and her sinks. That's it. It's not. It wasn't a personal attack. <laughs> it was it? But because I think deep down she's not okay that there isn't a a, a him mm-hmm. in her life. So she took that real personal. I mean, that, that kind of thing happens, you know. Yes. Some people say things, and you know, because we have our own insecurities, we feel personally attacked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, that's real life. I think V did an ex. Um, I think Angel did an excellent job depicting that. Uh, that truthfully. Yes. Definitely. Um, so then later on, we see um, Veronica. She's at home. She gets a message from her ex from college, Ken. And, and, you know, she's checking out his page. He's an accomplished fellow. Okay. And uh, he moved back to Atlanta. So she got to thinking, like, how does it feel? Yes, with the D'Angelo. I I'm was like, why does she keep I opening and closing her, her laptop? Like, <laughs> Girl, you're fantasizing that. Like the page is actually his like work page. So it's like you can look at that. You're gonna see triggering. it open or close, girl. In your mind. Because all these old feelings came coming back. I love that like blue line. You everybody getting that old thing back. All of these dudes are coming back. These dudes are coming back. That is right. That's so true. Yes. <laughs> I had to think about 
all that. And when you're living your life and happy, that's mm. when the old ones always want to come knocking. It is my personal opinion that every time a guy from my past comes back, he comes back with one intention to distract me. Like every single time that a man yeah. from my past has come back, it has not worked out and it has only been a distraction. Mm, yeah. There's no re- They're in the past for a reason. And there's so many new guys out there. Like Sometimes it's, it's exhausting new people. <laughs> they, I mean, they, they're out there, right? They're, they're so I many want to answer what's your favorite color. I don't want to answer it's that anymore. It's the journey of getting to know someone new that's exhausting. If you're not. As an adult, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Dating. Dating has its dating has its lumps and its bones. Yeah. It's a whole nother discussion. Girl. <laughs> right. Uh, but Veronica, she ends up calling the dude from the lunch, the lunch, the brunch, and you know they getting it in. They having sex, uh, but she's bored. She's just like she's there, but she's not there until she starts, you know, imagining that the guy is actually Ken. And that's when she really get into it and she starts getting hers. And I'm like, go girl, ride that cowboy. (laughs) I mean, I wonder why she, I mean, I guess she just didn't want to go down that rabbit hole messing around with Ken because he, and he's the only one that got to her. I get it. I, I get it. Like I said, I mean, when guys from the past come back, I assume they're coming back to distract me like you you know and particularly if you guys have a history and they didn't do right mm-hmm. in, like Aaron right if they didn't do right with in the in the past what is to make me think that this is going to be anything different unless I consistently see something right. different and then it's like do you even want to give them the opportunity to show you that yeah exactly so we'll see what happens but I definitely don't think anything's going to happen with her and brunch boy brunch it's just boy? something to do is that what you called him brunch boy we got a name <laughs> No, but well, Brian, 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 I'll take it back. She said no, Brian. Girl, listen to me. She said no, that's not what his name is. Actually, Brian. Two on the nose, Brian. Brunch. Brunch. So, um, then we see Dion. You know, he calls his mom, and a man picks up, and it got him shook. Like, whose phone is this? What? What's going on? And the mom does not even have time to him. Like, we're grilling. We're having fun. Who's we? Who's we? So he meets up with Vince and he's kind of venting to him and like like Vince just want everybody to be happy and outside. Like that's it. He's happy and outside. Happy and outside. Yes. Like get like me. <laughs> get like me. I mean, I love Miss Connie. So Miss Connie is played by um an actress named Miss Charmin um Neil. Yes. Yeah, she was so a girlfriend, I- right? Yes, she played Maya's yes. mom and yes. girlfriend. Maya's mom. And um she she's an incredible actress um highly respected a, a joy to work with and you know very easy to learn from mm. so yeah i love working with miss Sharman, and i call her miss Sharman not because for no other reason just to put some respect on her name because she's, yeah. she's the bomb i yeah. love her we'll see yeah. miss connie getting her loins mm. late okay <laughs> i love it <laughs> he's like me <laughs> What do you mean? That game never gets old. That game of teasing your friends because their parents are like dating and you know, because you have to be happy for them, right? Yeah. Especially if you've seen them not be happy and not have love for an extended period of time. So I think it's just weird for him because he's always been the man of the house. It's always been him. So it's like, who? Who are you? you And it's like, what do you need a man for? I'm here. Do I have to tell you, son? What I need a man for? Right. I don't want to have to tell you. Let's be happy to hear. That's Come it. On. So Vince and Dion meet up with Shoshana, and she brings a friend. This scene was hilarious. Like, Dion had me cracking up because he was just like, what? What, what the hell is happening right now? <laughs> so you want to do a double date in a pandemic? <laughs> real quick because i only came for the food and drinks you ain't say nothing about a double date i so i guess in dion's mind it was just gonna be the three of them yeah he said at brunch he was like i don't have third will in it cute okay that's not awkward <laughs> like in my mind i'm like so we gonna it's gonna be me you your woman and your woman's gonna pay for the three of us that's what dion thought he thought and that's what he thought, but no, no, it came with a price. <laughs> it came with a price. So, what's your background? 
I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in finance. No, I meant culture. <laughs> Do you want a copy of my 23 Me? Do you have it with you? No. <sighs> what do you do in finance? Uh, I'm an auditor. Mm, you're so athletic. It was weird. Like, it's a fetish, almost. It's fetish. It was. She just wanted yeah. the black peen. That's all she was looking for. She, she's like, do you want my 23 and me? And she's like, do you have it? And it's like, what? Who's walking around with that? <laughs> it is. It's, it, yeah, it's fetishy. It, I think that was the yeah. intention to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of show that. That sometimes it really does give, oh, this is a young buck to come, you know, set the set the plumbing right. That came out new. Mm -hmm. but yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right. right. But she was offering a free trip to Mexico. I don't know why Dion was playing. Like, if you don't let this lady pay for your stuff, you're <laughs> broke. You don't have no money. So, morals and money? Come integrity. on. Integrity. Choose one. Integrity. Dion stood on his integrity. He's like, can't, I can't bring this lady home to my mom's. Oh, that was never the intention. Oh. That was never on the cards. Like, no, but I don't know the way Shoshana has been kind of infiltrating Vince's life. You never know where they're gonna pop up. So That's them. <laughs> definitely sets some ground rules. Like, listen, it's never gonna get past whatever this is. Like, yeah, boundaries gonna... early. Yeah, mm -hmm. boundaries. Um, but this woman was low key um molesting him. Like she's like touching him without his consent. And I'm like, if that was a man doing that to a woman. <laughs> We will all be like, what what the fuck? Mm, that's true. But because she thinks she's a woman, she can just touch him. No, miss. That's not okay. He was just really aggressive. I think too, like sometimes it's like, oh, you know, you, you think he likes it because he's a guy. She was mm -hmm. really aggressive. Right. Right. It was too much for me. <laughs> Bring it down. Right? But the weird thing was like if Dion thought that it was just gonna be the three of them, was he really gonna just watch? Shoshana feeding um Vince the entire time. Like he probably would have been weirded out by that too. That was my that's my point. Like at least you know she brought a friend. You guys could have hit it off. Mm -hmm. Right. Because he was paying no mind to them. Right. It just so happened that you didn't hit it off, but you could have. Yeah. She was looking out for you. If you've gone out with your friend and a guy, wouldn't you want him to bring a friend or not? Yes. If he's pre-approved, I need to see a photo first. Yeah, definitely. Okay. You need them vetted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then we have Lane. She's trying to find different ways to like de-stress. Um, she's trying to find free ways to de-stress. And, you know, nothing is working for her. You know, she created this list of things that she needs to do to kind of relax herself. And one of them was to make amends. Um so she ends up at Dion's place and she tells him like post panic attack I realize that you're actually a really big stressor in my life. I'm stressing you out? Look, I don't even know what's up between us. You got to tell me. Okay, great. Let's just air it all out now. Okay. You've been acting weird as hell lately, but I hope that you're serious about hashing things out cuz I just Great. You feel better? Cuz I feel better. What the fuck? And he is confusion. He's like, how? What have I done? I'm, I don't know what's happening. What, what's happening? And I'm, I'm like, I'm with you on that one because she has not explained anything to him. So he's just like, you're acting weird. Like, it's, right. it's not but mathing. The math is not mathing here. <laughs> as she's talking to him, all she can do is think about that woman she saw him with. And it's like taking her for a loop. Like she can't right. think about it. But she just needs to tell him, like, I saw you with that girl. And I'm not happy about it. Like, talk about it. He doesn't even know. He has no idea. Sometimes, yeah, we be in our heads. You know, we, we, we're human. We be in our heads sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. He, like, offered her a seat. And all she can see is that woman that was on top of him, making out with him. And she's like, you good? I'm good. All right, I'm going to go. And he's like, what the hell? <laughs> he's so confused. Like, we haven't even started a conversation yet, and you're already like, okay, you're great. I'm yeah. going to go now. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. How's right? You're not good, sis. <laughs> you're not good. You're not good. Oh, my poor baby. I know. <laughs> my poor baby. So she's then she starts so driving, and I'm like, oh, no, she's going to get into a car accident because she is stressed upon stress upon stress. Like, we can't have this. That's freaking out. No. That... I mean, even when I read it in the script, 
when you read that a main character starts bugging out and then they jump into the street, you just never know how that's going to go. Right, right. So, I mean, I knew nothing. I didn't think anything terrible. Like, I, you know, like, I mean, this isn't, you know, it's a comedy, but you don't know. You don't know. Not right, and we're on an episode two. Like, we cannot have That's her right. in a car. He's got here. Right, bro, get back in the car. Just pull over. It happens, though. I mean, it 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 happens. I don't. If anyone out there is listening and you've experienced a panic attack and you are claustrophobic and you know and and you just need to be, just be careful. Jesus, it's it was a really terrifying thing for me to read. Yeah, but she's so in her head. She thinks, you know, she has it all together. She can handle, like, driving, but she can't. So she has to pull over. And Tracy ends up calling her. You know, she got her own thing going on. She's going off about Aaron. And she can't handle all of this. Like, Lane cannot handle your problems and her problems. (laughs) She can't multitask. Yes, it's too much. Uh, So she ends up getting out the car. And, you know, she just needs, like, some air. The AC in the car is not enough for her. She needs fresh air. So she gets out of the car. With all this traffic. With all this like, traffic. Be careful. I was nervous for my friend Lane. Same. same. I mean, it was a it was a well-written scene. And it was, it was. when I watched it, I was like, oh man, this is so relatable. It's just so relatable, especially in a time like this. You know, there are, I, you know, when the pandemic first started, there wasn't a lot of traffic. And I know that there are some people who sort of deal with like driving anxiety. Um, I have a yeah. girlfriend who, you know, who has that. So it's like c- coming back out and reacclimating to the traffic and all of that thing. So yeah, it's, it's relatable. It's really, it yeah. happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's, it's very lame because she already like, she doesn't really take care of herself. Like she's not that careful. So I'm like, if anybody was to be like the ones like hop into a car thinking that, you know, they can just drive and nothing will happen to them. It's definitely lame. Yeah. Cause she, she kind of just doesn't think like that. Like she just be, she just go, she just goes, she just does what she does. She's like in denial too. She like is very much so okay. in denial. Mm-hmm. And it's not, she's not okay at all. And even while she's having this panic attack, you know, Tracy's on the phone. Then she also got Liberty blowing up her line because what? The stylist is there Mm. for this opportunity and she's missing it. And she's having, it's just too much going on. I'm telling you, every time you just say say it, I'm like, it's just, and that's how it be. Like, that's how it is. When it rains, it pours. Everything sort of like pours down at you at once and it's someone else is telling you something going on with them and you're getting new information about how things are like, collapsing around you it and then like another goal or aspiration you had seems to like be snatched from your grasp it's it's so human yeah so So that's one thing particularly about the show but even you know that also is prevalent in this episode like it's just human stuff black human Mm -hmm. stuff black millennial human stuff yes it is (laughs) And then mm-hmm. even her paper ends up flying out the car. And I'm like, I know she ain't take a picture. Bro, that, 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 that was out the window. That was literally out the window. <laughs> Going with the wind. Yes. Out the window. She <laughs> trying to calm down. Oh, <laughs> now she don't know what she needs to work on no more. She don't know. She has no plan. It wasn't working anyway. Therapy. I mean, <laughs> therapy says. Next time, right in the cloud. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so that's how episode two ends so let's jump into our question comments concerned aka the writer's room the writer's room because okay. you know we writers Loki. Not even seriously. okay so i mean i what i see for lane this season i definitely think we're going to see her seeing a therapist i hope she can get a therapist but also can she afford a therapist because therapy is not cheap does she have insurance these are things these are things that come up when dealing with therapy I, I, if i can interject and say this i do believe that therapy isn't like i i used to look at it as kind of a luxury and then i'm like no like this is the cost of uh 
maintenance and survival. Like I yeah. pay for toothpaste, like, you know, I mean, obviously yeah. therapy is more expensive, but that I need therapy like I need toothpaste. Right. <laughs> You know, it's for my health and my well Therapist, doctor, dentist, like it all needs to, you, you need, need it. it. Especially black folks. And I, yes. I wish it were, and I do believe it's becoming more um, attainable in our community. For we, 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 we deserve it and we should have it. I think that mm-hmm. we can free for black. The good one. The good yes. therapist, not the good black folks. The good ones <laughs> isn't the good doctor. <laughs> Yes, yes. I want us to have a good doc. I also want her to have that conversation with Dion. Like, I feel like once she has it, a whole weight will be lifted off her shoulders. But she's so afraid to even verbalize the words. Like, she cannot even speak it out there to him. Maybe she's afraid of, like, how he'd react. Or, I don't know. Just, she has to be able to, like, tell him. Because he doesn't know what the hell's happening. And it's just hurting her her whole like beings. Our last episode, Rashida, we kind of had like a heated discussion about who was in the wrong in the finale as far as Dion and Lane. Like, you know, Mary felt Dion, no. We did both. We did both. We did agree on both. But it's like, was Dion wrong for assuming that he was going to be saving Lane? And was Lane wrong for calling Greg and not Dion? Girl, I feel like this. If you in the bookings, you better call who you think gonna come get you. That's what I said. Whoever got the coins. Whoever you think got whoever you think gonna come get you. First it ain't about you. Take the personal out of here. I need to get out of this place. Truly. So I'm calling whoever. Now, I mean, Dion saw it all go down. Right. Could she have just And he told her, he said, I got you as soon as they were leaving. Didn't he say that? I don't know about he that. He did. Or, he, he said, or, or, or maybe we'll figure something out. <laughs> something like we'll figure something out. That's not what you want to hear going into the paddy wagon. We'll figure something out. Let me call, I would have called Greg too. Oh, you know what? Man. I can, you know what? Honestly, I take that back if I can. I, I take that back if I can. I don't know. I don't know what I would have done in that situation. I really can't even call it. I don't know what I would have done in that yeah. situation. I think I would have called Vince. Like, I know he's making money. But I think he said his check wasn't cleared or something like that. Yeah, I think so that's weird. what he said. And for all we know, Vince could have been overdrafted on that account. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> said, Vince? You put your faith in Vince? You got one phone call, honey. <laughs> You got the one. If you, I mean, well, Veronica had a, a couple phone calls. It's a mess. You get more. That's true. Never mind. So, but I mean, I would call the most responsible person. So even if they couldn't get me out, you know to call someone in my line yeah. to come get mm-hmm. me. And Greg is responsible. Dion is responsible too, though. And they've been friends. Yeah, yeah but I think she had she had mentioned like. No, the friends both said to her, like, you know, Dion's not working right now. Like, he just quit his job. So what you going to do, girl? And so that's what she called Greg. I mean, hmm. we, we everybody was kind of in their own uh, dilemma at the book. That's true. So, right. you know, everybody was going to get out and get each other. They locked up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Last they let us out. It was sad. Yeah. Um, and Vince and Shoshan, do we think it's just gonna be something short or Mary, do you think this they're gonna be the real deal? I don't know because he he kind of complained to to Dion that you know she doesn't let him like sort of be the man and like pay for things. But when he's with her, he's like, Yeah, sure, like I'll play the games. Like he he doesn't try to so much. <laughs> so it's like, does he like her? Does he not like her? I'm not really sure. I definitely think he likes her. You think he likes her? I think he likes her. I don't know. Maybe yeah. he like maybe he feels like she emasculates him in some way. So I don't know. We shall see. Yeah, I mean, and I'm just excited for Tracy. I hope that she doesn't let Aaron back into her life romantically. Like for someone that hurt you that bad. You do not want to repeat patterns, but then we do. A lot of women, we do. No, because we believe in our heart of hearts that like he's changed. The change, he's, grown, he's different. 
And that can be the case for some. So why do you think that even Veronica should, should go back with Ken? Ah, no. Because if, because he would, he hurt her as well. Speaking from, well, from a character perspective, no. Right. But I mean, from as Rashida, no, the guys from the past, they're kind of in the same boat. They come and they, and I really do think they just come to distract you when you're on the up and up, you know, I haven't been wrong about that yet. <laughs> yeah. Ain't none of my old boos who came back, came back doing, came, we're not together today. It's definitely a distraction. And sometimes people just be bored. Bored and lonely. Bored and lonely. Yeah. Bored and, lonely. Yep. and if we're mm-hmm. being honest, sometimes a distraction is Sometimes. But I kind of do want to see Veronica give Ken a chance. I kind of do want to see that simply because you know, what they had was in college and now they're in their 30s. So it's like, maybe he has grown. Maybe he is a better person as opposed to Tracy and Aaron, because that's more recent. Yeah, I mean, it would be exciting to see more of a mature love now that, and, and the fact that like, he came back and he reached out to her on social media. It means that like, you know, and even with Aaron, Aaron came back to Tracy. It's not like the women are gone, falling back to these men. That's so, true. you know, maybe they are coming back because they're ready, right? There's something about a guy who has his green light on. You can't, they can't do, you can't make a man do anything. If he got his mm-hmm. green light on and he ready, then that's the time that mm-hmm. he's going to want to be serious. But girl, if he ain't got his green light on, he ain't ready. And you can't make, you can't make him turn it on. Yeah, it takes years for them to put that green light on. They be ready with, at 60 years old. All right, come on. Who wants you? <laughs> you know, and, I, but, to, and to be fair, with Tracy and Aaron, they've had an on-again, off-again romance for a very long time. Not as long as college, but shortly thereafter. it It's been yeah. a journey. All right, so she might be on. If they always had on and off again, then she might be open to it seeing what happens with him. I know the producer's going to want to see it, so... Oh, definitely. I hope she finds someone new. That's more drama for hey. me. Him trying to fight for her love. Like, let's turn it into a whole different reality show. <laughs> it's a duel. <laughs> what a, what a duel for the love of Tracy. Oh my goodness. Could you imagine that reality show? It's legit. The best Can we do that? Look, hello, bigger writers. Right? We need that. Some kind of flavor of love. I love New York for Tracy. Love My favorite it. part would just be the naming of all the guys. Yeah. That would be fun. <laughs> Always the best part. That's the best part. <laughs> okay, any other predictions you have, Mary? I did catch a glimpse of episode three, but I'll let you watch. So they got all the superstars in the house, girl. Great guest stars. Oh, season. I love it. Um, if anyone hasn't watched bigger season two yet well first go back and watch season one and if you haven't seen yes. season two please watch it it's so much fun we have a blast shooting it and we really get excited that you guys love it so thank you guys for having me on and recapping the show with me i i love you later we love you too. for those who don't know uh seriously has been riding with us since season one so y'all are y'all are y'all y'all are family Turn it up. Let them know. Turn it up. Let them know. Let them know. Thank you so much, Rashida, for coming through again. Another So we really love you, your character, Tracy, everyone, the whole bigger family. So if you can just, you know, let everyone know where they can follow you and like any other projects you got going on, anything you want. Cool. Um, You can find me on all social media platforms at Rashida Crockett. Uh, That's one E, two T's. And um, I am also in American Pie Girls Rule. I think I said that last time, too. So now it's currently out on Netflix. Yeah, come on. Come on, we out for market. (laughs) Awesome. So definitely check that out, guys. Watch um, season one of Bigger if you haven't already. Then come listen to Seriously Podcast, Mm -hmm. our recaps of season one. Then start (laughs) Bigger season two and come back right here. Um, if you, you can follow us on all social media platforms at Seriously Podcast, S E R I E S O Y Podcast, and all podcast platforms with the same name. And until next week, bye, bye guys.